What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the Neighborhood Podcast. I'm one of the hosts of the podcast. My name is Kevin Valentin. And in today's segment, we are going to talk about game four of the NBA Finals coming up on Friday. Mainly, we're going to talk about some adjustments that both teams need to make. Uh, specifically, we have to start with Miami as they were the losers of game three. And there was a lot to adjust, in my professional opinion, as to what they need to do to try to get back at least some control of this series and win game four at home. So Miami obviously shot very inefficiently from the field. Miami did not look very good. Some of their key contributors that have helped them get to the, this point, get to this point, this entire playoff uh, run, just were absolutely atrocious. Max Struess did not play very well. Nor did Gabe Vincent. Uh, Caleb Martin didn't exactly give the pop that he's been given most of this postseason, but he is coming off of I think flu-like symptoms that he was suffering in uh, in Denver. Uh, Jimmy Butler shot under fifty percent from the field. Bam Adebayo had a bad game, and so on and so forth. The funny part is. Miami only had four turnovers this game, and they still lost this game by 15 points. So what I'm looking for, Miami needs to revert back to that defensive zone to limit Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. That pick and roll that those two players run is just, it seems to be almost unstoppable. And when you really think about it, both of them ended up having triple doubles. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time that two players have ever had a triple-double on the same team in an NBA Finals game. So there's a lot to work on here. Also, from an offensive standpoint, yes, they did get to the free throw line, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm reading this correctly. 19 times. Sorry, I thought I said 18. My eyes are going bad. Um, But Denver ended up going to the free throw line 27 times. Now, fouls were a little ticky-tacky here and again as the game progressed. We all know that it's not what it used to be in the NBA, and some fouls are a little bit more sensitive than others. But I've always said this, and I will continue to say it. If shots aren't falling from behind the arc or just from the mid-range game, attack the basket. If Miami continues to run this small lineup, you have to find a way to penetrate in the paint and go and attack the basket and find a way to get to the free throw line. We said this after game one. When Miami shot 20 or more free throws, they won the game in game two. They were one free throw shy of scoring 20, or should I say getting 20 free throw attempts, but it just it didn't seem aggressive enough, and it just seemed a little too late when they started to attack. The lead had bulged up to what was looked to be uh, irrelevant to trying to make a comeback, but again, for Miami to win, you got to get Jokic in foul trouble. You got to get him off the floor. You got to find a way to disrupt that pick and roll, like I said, with Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. So maybe get Jamal Murray in some foul trouble as well, but when Miami runs that lineup of... Gabe Vincent, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, um, Caleb Martin, and and Bam Adebayo or Kevin Love, it, it's just not going to work, especially when Michael Porter Jr. by himself is six foot ten, towering over the, the roster. From Denver's standpoint, I don't know how you go and critique anything that Denver did. Like I said, Jokic and Murray had a triple-double. The only thing I'm looking at is their role players need to step up. Michael Porter Jr. is getting paid $30 million a season to score two points in the NBA Finals. How is it that you got two points and seven boards and you played 21 minutes? That's it? One of seven. He shot two of 11 from the three-point line in game one. Last game, didn't look too much better. And now this game, you put up two. What are you doing? What are you, you getting paid for cardio? KCP. I can't give him a lot of, of slack because KCP's a 3 and D player. He's always guarding and running around and chasing somebody off the perimeter, whether that's Gabe Vincent, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson. He doesn't care. He's going to guard anybody. But... For you to go one of four from the field, back-to-back single-digit games, not acceptable. Why is it that the rest of the bench didn't come up outside of Chris Brown or Christian Brown? Why did I say Chris Brown? That's my favorite artist, but again, neither here nor there. He goes for 15 by himself, and then you got Jeff Green, only four, and then Bruce Brown, only five. Yes, you were carried by your franchise players, your two pillars, your superstars. That's exactly what's supposed to happen in the playoffs, but... In a case where they have off nights like Jamal Murray kind of had in game two, you need the team to step up, which they did in that game. So I understand they kind of had a little bit of an off night, but when your superstars are carrying the load, you just need enough to get people over the hump. And those timely shots ended up coming from Jamal Murray and uh, and obviously Christian Brown. So overall, I think game four is going to be more competitive. I don't necessarily have a definitive prediction. It really just depends on what team decides to show up for Miami. Are they going to be aggressive? Are they going to be able to hit jump shots? Are they going to find a way to force turnovers like they did today with 13 against Denver? Or are you going to get an inefficient Miami once again? Are you going to get a Miami that's continuously abused mismatch-wise from the size? 
And are you going to allow Nikola Jokic to dominate you in every facet of the basketball game? I know it's hard to stop. I know he is a unstoppable, immovable object and force, but, I mean, you have to find a way to contain him. You're in the NBA Finals. There's no room for error here. Eric Spolster has to find a, make, find a way to make adjustments. If this is going to be a game of chess from the head coach position, Mike Malone just moved closer to check. It's just a matter of how close they're going to get to checkmate because if Denver continues this pace, despite these role players of the Nuggets struggling, just imagine if Michael Porter just starts to get a little hot and KCP hits, hits a couple of shots. These games are blowouts. This already was, but if those role players find a way to get into a groove, into a rhythm, they still got two more games to go, so it is possible. If Miami has another bad night and this formula continues to happen for Denver, this is going to end up in a gentleman's sweep, and that's going to be embarrassing for Miami after the run that they've had this season.